Hello, welcome and welcome back to a new Unreal Engine video. Have you ever wanted to make a bolt style building system? You know what I mean. The ones where you can just walk up to the actors, you don't have the grid or anything, you can just walk up to these actors and you go bolt, bolt, and they stay together. Well, that's what we're going to be doing today. So, to get started, I will hop out of this pro hop out of the viewport. To get started, we'll be using a first person character with an interface. It's got its own as. So, and then the component is right here with the bolter. So very similar to how we've had it before for like the fishing pole or the bow and arrow. The components here, we have two components. The first one is the bolt, which is going to just hold our static mesh. This is not going to have any logic. It's just going to be holding our mesh for our uh, for our bolt. And it's also going to provide to be, or it's also going to be an anchor point for our physics constraint, because that's what we'll be using to limit the movement here. The bolt is, yep, the bolt's only visual. So the bolter here, the bolter here has, on the begin play, we're going to save that first person character. And then we're going to, on the E press, we're going to do bolt. And now this method or function is fairly long, but it's fairly simple. So the start here, we will do a line trace out from the camera, whatever distance. <laughs> That's it, just do a line trace. And then we're going to save some local variables here about what we hit. And then we will run the sequence to do, go down. Now here, we'll add our bolt to our hit actor. So the one that we hit, we'll add the bolt component. We'll manually attach it because that's what we're gonna do. And we're just gonna set the transform to the impact normal negated make rotator from X. This will point X inside of what? This will point X in the direction of the negated impact normal. So it'll basically put it, make it look like the bolt is inside the box or whatever you pull together. The relative transfer uh, location is impact point bolt class, bolt component class. That was that one that's holding the static mesh. We'll promote it to a local actor or a local variable. And then here we'll add a physics constraint. This physics constraint is a default one that's built into the engine, very similar to the cable component. In fact, it's very similar to the cable component. Yeah, so we'll add that physics constraint component, right? At that location, very similar to how we did the bolt here. Same, same thing. And then the next two steps here, we're going to attach the bolt to the hit component that we hit. And then we're going to attach that physics constraint to the bolt. So the bolt acts as an anchor point for our physics constraint. So if the bolt is ever destroyed, it'll take this physics constraint with it. Or we can go with the reverse. If the physics constraint is ever destroyed, we can destroy the bolt as well. And then from there, we're going to go from the impact normal. So we're going to go in whatever box. We're going to do another line trace, but instead we're going to go in the box or inside of whatever we hit by this bolt length. And so we'll pick up whatever our next item is to attach together. And this next one, the set constraint components. So if we have a hit, we'll set the constraint point components to the phys physics constraint component. That's what we're going to be running this function on with our local hit component. So whatever we hit, and then the other hit component. So the secondary hit. So we'll attach the first hit component to the second one through a physics constraint. That's what it's going to do. We're, we're essentially doing the attach component to component but not actually doing the attachment. We're going through a physics constraint to manage the attachment and manage like it's like it's axis values and things like that. And then would you guess the next part is to manage the axis values because that's what these three are doing. They're locked, limit of zero. So this is locking it along the axis. And then the next two ones will be locking it along the, <clears throat> locking the first and second one. They're gonna lock the angular swing. So it's not gonna swing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That should set us up now to bolt things together. So to jump in, we have the bolter. We can go up to these. We can see that the physics actors are in fact movable. We can go up, bolt them together. We can hit them and there you go. We've got like things up against the wall here. We can push around, I don't push around, but if we don't want them to move, we just bolt them to the wall. They can't move. We've got here, we've got this wall. We've got some walls, big beautiful wall. We can destroy things like that. If I reset the wall now, and we just go up to the wall and we say, okay, go ahead and just bolt this to the wall, bolt, bolt. And we just go all the way down the wall. And I think this is the superior form. I think this is a superior form of building personally, just being able to uh, bolt together physics things. Now we do need a physics handle in order to like actually physically move the physics objects around. But since this is on a key press of E or whatever you want to set it up as, you could easily set up the physics handle as something else. So you can say, this is a picture frame. You could say maybe Q for, to activate the physics handle. You can lift it up and then hit E to bolt it into place. Things like that. And then release it. But yeah, the wall here is solid now. You cannot walk through it compared to before. 
where you can. So that's all I wanted to show out today or show you today. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.